האם זה באמת סגולה בדוקה? אז סגולה ללמוד בזה? Good evening, Erev Tov. Dobro vietcher. We are in the Zera Shimshon on Parsha, Parshas Shlach Os Dalid, which is section number four. Before we begin this section, let's take a look at some psukim from our Parsha. These psukim come after the Chet HaMiraglim, after the episode of the spies. And Hashem's response or reaction to that episode is to say to Moshe, let me wipe out this nation. And start a new nation with you, Moshe. And Moshe uh, answers as follows. This is Perak Yudalid, Sukim Yud Gimel through Tezayan in Parshas Shlach. By Yomer Moshe al Hashem, and Moshe said to Hashem, Vishomu Mitzrayim. Meaning, if, if you wipe out the people, then the Egyptians will hear. Ki he'eliso bechochacho es ha'am hazem mikirbo that you took out with your strength this nation from among the Egyptians, the Omru El Yoshev Ha'aretz Hazos, and they will say about the inhabitants of this land, meaning Eretz Kena'an, Shomu Ki Ato Hashem Bekerev Ha'am Hazeh, they will hear that you, Hashem, are in the midst of this people, Asher Ayin Ba'ayin Nir Ato Hashem, that you see, have seen this people eye to eye, the anancha omed alehem, and your cloud stands above them, uve amud anan, and with a pillar of cloud ataholech lifnehem, you go in front of them, yomam, during the day, uve amud eish laila, and with a pillar of fire at night, ve heimato esam hazeh keish echad, and then you're going to kill all of these people like one man. You're just going to wipe out all of these people at one time. The Amru Hagoyim, and the nations will say, Asher Shomu Es Shimacha, who heard about your great reputation, Lemor, saying, when the people hear this, they'll say, Mi bilti yecholes Hashem. This is because Hashem wasn't able, Lehavi Es Ha'am Hazeh, to bring this nation, El Ha'aretz Asher Nishba Lohem, to the land that he had sworn to give them, and therefore he slaughtered them in the Midbar. So Moshe's response to Hashem saying, Moshe, uh, so to speak, I can't take these people anymore after the sin of the Meraglim, they've gone too far. And Moshe says, wait, wait, think about what's going to be the response when the Egyptians hear about this and when the people in Canaan and all the people in the world who know about you and have heard of your great acts, think how they're going to view this from their perspective when you, if you, God forbid, wipe out the Jewish people, what are they going to say? They're going to say you did it because you were unable. You didn't have the power and you didn't have the strength to bring them into Eretz Canaan as you had promised their forefathers and as you had sworn to them. And that's going to be, the point is, that's going to be a chilul Hashem, a desecration of Hashem's name. And so Moshe continues to debate and protect the Jewish people and argue with Hashem. And ultimately Hashem says, yes, I'll forgive them and we will continue the original plan to take the Jewish people to Eretz Kenan. Let's get right into the Zera Shimshon in section four, Ostalid. Vayomer Moshe el Hashem, and Moshe said to Hashem, Vishomu Mitzrayim, and the Egyptians will hear, Ki he'eliso bechochacho es ha'am hazem ikirbo, that you took these people out from Egypt, uh, from, from the midst of the Egyptians with your strength. Zer Shimshon starts with a question. Koshe, there's a problem here. Shenire, it appears, Sheikr Hatam, the main reason there would be a problem, Toloi depended, Mivnei Shehela Mimitzrayim Bechocho, that Hashem took the, the people out with his strength. Halav Hachi, but it seems to imply that if it wasn't for that, Loha Yopitzchon Pet La Mitzrayim. There would not have been uh, anything uh, objectionable or problematic for the Egyptians to say. So this first question, and it's going to continue, this is part A, you'll see it'll continue to a part B in a moment, 
But the first part of the question is, why did Moshe emphasize Hashem? The Egyptians are going to say, hey, we, we know you took them out with your strength from Mitzrayim, and now you're not taking them to Eretz Canaan. Why was that relevant, that Hashem took them out of Mitzrayim with his strength? What was, what was the significance of that? The ode, and another question, but really part two of the same question, the Amru, the and they will say, etc. Shomu ki ato Hashem, uh, they will hear that you, Hashem, the Anoncha Omeid, and your cloud stands over the people. In other words, the people will say, we, we heard, Hashem, that you were extremely involved with this nation, with Am Yisrael, and you were... You saw them eye to eye at Har Sinai. You, you covered them and protected them with your clouds. Vehemata. And then you killed them. Vehule, etc. Nira, it seems from these psukim, she'ikar hapischon pe, she'yesh la mitzrim, that the main uh, uh, pretext that the Egyptians had, hu mipne, it was because she'hakodesh borchu hetiv li Yisrael that Hashem had done good things for the Jewish people, and therefore me built the Yecholas Hashem. And therefore they would conclude that Hashem wasn't able to bring them to Eretz Canaan, and that's why he had to wipe them out. So the two parts of this question combine as follows. Why is it that there are two different, seemingly two different uh, reasons that Moshe is saying there's going to be a problem one is because Hashem took out, the Egyptians will say Hashem took out the Jews with his great strength. And, and another one says it's because Hashem was go, so good to them and he connected to them and he protected them with his clouds and he was so intimately involved with them. That's why there's going to be a problem. So what is it about these two things? Why are they both significant? And why are there two different reasons? So we need to know, ultimately, we're going to, the Zerah Shimshon is going to explain to us how these two things fit together and why Moshe mentioned both of them in his effort to persuade Hashem not to wipe out the uh, B'nai Yisrael, not to destroy them at this time after the Chet HaMaragdim, after the episode of the spies, but rather to continue to preserve them and to maintain them and to keep on with the journey to Eretz Canaan. V'yesh Lomar, and we can say, Kavonas Moshe Hilomar. Moshe's intention was to say, Ata hakel You, Hashem, are the powerful God that took them out of Mitzrayim. V'dilagta es hakets. And you skipped over time in order to get to the end of their of their servitude, Shelobiritzon Hamitzrium, against the will of the Egyptians. This is a reference, of course, to Chazal's teaching that the full amount of time uh, that Bnei Yisrael was uh, originally destined to spend in Mitzrayim in servitude and slavery had not yet finished, and Hashem decided to recalculate, so to speak, or to do a different type of calculation and to take them out before their full time was up. And the Egyptians will hear that you took them up with your strength. What does with your strength mean here? Zerah Shimshon says, With your strength is a reference to the fact that Hashem decided to take them out before the destined time, before the preordained time to take them out. So it doesn't mean the normal uh, strength that we would think, Hashem, you took them out with your mighty strength and with your power and with your miracles. That's what we would normally think. Zer Shimshon says that's not what it means here. What it means here is that the Egyptians had noticed and had understood clearly that Hashem took out the Jewish people from slavery before the full amount of years had been filled. The Omru El Yoshev Haaretz Hazos, and now we move to the to the uh, to the next the pasuk or to the second part of those psukim that we read uh, before we we started this piece, and they will say about the people who dwell, the inhabitants who dwell in Eretz Kenaan, 
Dafka, specifically those people in Eretz Kenan, Shemipnei, Sheadayan Lo Ovar Hazman, specifically because the time period had not elapsed, Enom Yecholim Lo Vole Eretz Yisrael. That's why Hashem could not bring Bnei Yisrael up to Eretz Kenan. So the time issue becomes the key to the understanding everything that Moshe is saying to Hashem. And it helps us understand how the two ideas in the psukim that we read fit together. And, he, and here, let's pause here to understand that before the Zerah Shimshon continues. Uh, Moshe was saying to Hashem, the Egyptians are very perceptive people. They watch events, they study events, and they analyze events very carefully. They are aware of the fact that you took out B'nai Yisrael from their land before the full amount of years had been finished. You took them out early. And therefore, they will think that when you don't bring them to Eretz Canaan, when you wipe them out, as Hashem had proposed to Moshe, you did it because you couldn't bring them to Eretz Canaan because you had taken that out of Egypt too early. You brought them out too early from Egypt, and therefore it was too early for them to go to Eretz Canaan. The time was not yet ripe for them to go to Eretz Canaan, and therefore that's why Hashem had to kill them. That's Moshe says, that's what the Egyptians are going to think. That's how they're going to interpret the events if you wipe out the Jewish people in the Midbar. Viharaya and the proof to this, to this idea, the proof to this conspiracy theory that the Egyptians would have, so to speak, is Sha'ato Yisrael Haim Tobim Vitsadikim. At this point, from the eyes of the Egypt, from Egyptian, from the Egyptian perspective, the Jews were good, righteous people. After all, that's why Hashem saved them and rescued them and took them out and brought them to Har Sinai and was bringing them on the way to bringing them to Eretz Canaan because they were so good. That's why Hashem had such a special relationship with them. Shaharei ayin ba'ayin nira hata Hashem. Because you see eye to eye with this people, and your cloud is covering them. This is what Moshe was saying, etc. Nonetheless, even though Hashem, you loved them so much and they were so righteous, you're gonna you would kill them. This would be a decisive act. Me built Hashem that would prove that it's because Hashem was unable to bring this people, etc., meaning to bring this people to the land of Canaan. Why, why could he not bring them to the land of Canaan? Because from a lawful perspective, he did not have the legal ability to bring them to the land of Canaan, because the Canaanites still lived there, Klomar, meaning to say they didn't live there coincidentally, Toshav, they were legally allowed to live there. They owned the land. The Canaanim were the legal inhabitants of the land. And their time to be expelled from the land had not yet come. So let's pause here just to uh, to recap a little bit. So the Zer Shimshon has now fully explained his basic theme, which of course he's going to continue to develop and to prove and to support. But his basic theme is that if we want to understand the Moshe's argument to Hashem, when Hashem said, let me wipe out, I'll wipe out the people of this whole nation, I'll destroy them and start a new nation with you, Moshe. And Moshe says, wait a minute, wait a minute, the Egyptians are watching, the Canaanites are watching, the people of the world are watching, and the Egyptians are going to interpret events. If you wipe out B'nai Yisrael, they're going to interpret it that you took them out of Egypt with your strength, i.e. you took them out of Egypt before the time was done. But then because you did that, it wasn't yet the appropriate time for you, Hashem, to be able to bring them into the land of Canaan and kick out the inhabitants of the land or destroy the inhabitants of the land because they were at that time were the lawful inhabitants of the land. And you, Hashem, couldn't violate the rules. You couldn't break the rules yourself and bring them into Eretz Canaan when it wasn't yet time to do so. So that's how the Egyptians are going to interpret everything. And, and Moshe said, Hashem, you can't allow that to happen. All of the 
amazing miracles and wonders that you did to prove to the Egyptians and to the whole world and to Klal Yisrael uh, that you control everything in the world, that will be ruined, that will be damaged tremendously because people will see that you weren't able to fulfill your promise and bring the people into Eretz Kenah. Next paragraph. Uba Perike de Brochos in the fifth chapter of the Gemara Meseches Brochos. The Gemara comments about one of our psukim, Mi bilti yecholes Hashem. Hashem was not able to bring the people, the nation of Israel, into the land of Canaan. Yochol Hashem mi bo mi bo mi bo The Gemara says, the Gemara comments, the Pasuk really seemingly should have said, Yochol Hashem. Hashem was an able using the masculine form of the word able, yachol, instead of yecholes Hashem. Hashem was an able using the feminine form yecholes. So the Gemara and Brachos is asking why? Why does it use a feminine word Hashem was an able? Yecholes instead of the masculine word Hashem was an able, yachol. Omar Rabbi Elazar, Rabbi Elazar says, Omar Moshe. This reflects what Moshe said to Hashem. Achshav Yomru, now the Egyptians will say, Toshas Kocho Kinnekeva, Hashem's strength was weakened like a woman. And we'll see that this does not mean what, what it might appear to mean. But let's continue. Zer Shimshon will explain exactly what this phrase means. So Moshe said to Hashem, the Egyptians will say, Hashem's strength was weakened like a woman's. And he would not be able to save the Jews if he brought them into Eretz Canaan. They would be defeated by the nations who lived in Eretz Canaan. They wouldn't be victorious in battle against them because Hashem could not bring them in successfully to Eretz Canaan. He was weak. So Hashem said back to Moshe, Hashem said, wait a minute, why would the Egyptians ever say that I'm weak and I couldn't bring them to Eretz Canaan? Didn't they see what I did to them at the Yamsuf? Weren't the Egyptians very, very much aware of how I wiped out their entire army in an incredibly unprecedented and miraculous way at the Yamsuf, at the splitting of the sea, when I brought it crashing down on their heads and wiped them out? So what what kind of weakness did I show there that the Egyptians would think it's it's because of my weakness that I couldn't bring them into Eretz Canaan? On my lefonov, so Moshe said back to Hashem Ribono Shalola, master of the world, Achshav Yomru. Now they will say, Lifne Melech Echod Yocholamot. When Hashem went up against one king, namely Paro, the Egyptian ruler, he was able to defeat him. But to go up against the 31 kings, 31 kings of 31 separate peoples that lived in Eretz Canaan at that time, he was not able to go up against them and defeat them. So again, the Egyptians had, had watched events, uh, were watching events carefully, and Moshe knew exactly what they would say. If Hashem wiped out the Jews and didn't bring them to Eretz Canaan, the Egyptians would say, sure, he could beat us up and he could beat our one king, but there was no way. He, Hashem knew he wasn't going to be able to defeat the 31 peoples and kings of Eretz Canaan, and so therefore he had to wipe out Am Yisrael. Next paragraph. Vekoshe, and there are questions on this Gemara. Why does the Gemara quote Hashem as, as saying back to Moshe, don't the Egyptians, aren't the Egyptians aware of the miracles I did for them at the sea? Wouldn't it make more sense for Hashem to say to Moshe, weren't the Egyptians aware of the miracles I did to them? Uh, to bring about the exodus from Egypt? Umikolshkein, how much more so should Hashem have mentioned the miracles of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, even more than the miracles of Yamsuf, Kriyat Yamsuf? Lefi Perish Rashi, according to Rashi's commentary, Al Pasuk on the Pasuk about Yisro, when Yisro came to rejoin, to join, excuse me, to join the Jewish people, 
it says, and Yisro heard, Ki hotzi Hashem es Yisro mi Mitzrayim. That Hashem had taken out the Jewish people from Mitzrayim. Zo gedola al kulam. This is greater than all of the other things that Hashem had done. It's greater even than Yamstun, Kriyas Yamsuf. So why didn't Moshe mention that? V'chena kosov omer. And so too, a Pasuk in Devarim says, Oh, Hanisa Elohim lavo has any God ever tried to come to take one nation from the midst of another nation? In other words, against the will of a nation that's holding a nation in bondage. Has any 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 uh, any uh, alleged deity ever come to try and uh, rescue the nation? Bemasos with challenges and miracles, etc. So the first question on the Gemara and Brachos is, why is it that Hashem is uh, quoted as saying to Moshe, Don't the, didn't the Egyptians see the miracles I did at the Yamsuf? Why didn't Hashem say, didn't the Egyptians see the miracles I did when I took the Jews out of Mitzrayim, which is even greater? The Ode Koshen, another question on the Gemara and Brachos, the Lo Havalei Meimar, Hashem should not have, I'm sorry, Moshe, should not have said Ella, but Achshav Yomru Haumos Koshash Kocha. Moshe should have just said that the nations of the world will say Hashem was weakened. Hashem was weak. The Sulo, and he didn't need to say more than that. Umahu Kenekevo. Why did Moshe say Hashem was weak like a woman? The Ma Inyan Nekevo Lakan. Of what relevance is this statement that Hashem was weak like a woman here? So now the Zer Shimshon is going to explain to us the Gemara and Meseches Brachos that will help us understand on an even deeper level what was going on in the conversation between Hashem and Moshe, Moshe and Hashem after the Chet HaMaraglim. Next paragraph, V.H. Lomar, and we can say, De kavonas Moshe, how you saw Moshe's intention was, Sheha umos yomru, that the nations will say, Sheha kodesh barchu, eno yocho lasos. The nations of the world will say, Hashem is not able to do davar, anything, hefech, which would go against me, Masha gozrim habezdin shel mal. That which the heavenly court has decreed. And he doesn't have the power in his hands like a king. A king has full supreme authority. A king has total power. If the uh, advisors to a king or the princes or the nobility or the king's judges or the court system, whatever power of individuals or groups you can imagine that exist in a, in a land ruled by a king, if they, and we're talking about when kings were kings back in the good old days of kings, not the modern times when kings are just figureheads, uh, back in the days of kings, uh, kings had total power. So, so no matter what anyone might say, no one could restrain the power of the king, and the king had the final word. And people would say, apparently, Hashem is not like that, because Hashem has a heavenly court of malachim, of angels, and Hashem apparently can't go against the rulings of the heavenly court. And that's, on a deeper level, what was going on behind the scenes in this conversation between Moshe and Hashem. Moshe was saying, the people of the world will think you, Hashem, must listen against your will even. You must follow the rulings and the verdicts and the decisions of the heavenly court. Next paragraph. Ve'im tomar, and if you say, ve'halohu atzmo bora ha'bezdin shalmalo, isn't it true that Hashem himself is the one who created the heavenly court? Hashem created the malachim. Hashem established a heavenly court of the Malachim, who I don't allay him, and he's the master over all of them. The Echabsher, how is it possible? How that he doesn't have in his hand the ability, lasos, to do top of the next column. 
Dovar Afneged Ritonim to do anything he wants to, even against the will of the heavenly court. How is that possible? Yesh Lomar, we can say, Shematsinu Dugma Lozeh. We find a similar example of this, Be'isha, regarding a woman or regarding women. Shepsula Lodun Hi Be'atzma. The halacha states that women are not allowed to serve as judges themselves. But a woman can establish judges, can appoint judges. In those judges, that she appoints Yi Elohim Yoser Koach Mimeno. They will have more strength than she has, even though she appointed them, because they will be able to actually judge cases, whereas the woman who appointed them will not be able to judge uh, cases. And of course, if you're thinking in your mind of Devorah, the great Naviya, the prophetess in Sefer Malachim and Navi, that's what Bezer Shimshon is going to talk about as we proceed. As some of the commentators explain on the Pasuk, he shofta es Yisrael ba'esahi. There's a Pasuk, I'm, I said Malachim, the Pasuk is in Shoftim, in which it says, she devora judged the people at that time. Shehatur choshen mishpat, the halachic code of law, uh, state Simon Zion in section seven of Choshen Mishpat, he wrote, Shehoyusom milamedes lohem hadinim. Devorah was such a great Talmidach Achama, such a great Torah sage that she taught the judges what they needed to know in order to judge cases, to, to function as judges. Umeforshem Macherim Kosvu, other commentators wrote, What does it mean? Uh, that she judged the people. It doesn't mean she taught the judges. Rather, she would be the one to appoint the judges. Again, her knowledge of the law was so comprehensive that she could uh, appoint the proper judges who had the, the requisite amount of knowledge of halach and of the dinim uh, because she knew everything there was to know about the, uh, the laws. Because the words she judged the Jewish people cannot be taken in their simple literal meaning. Because if she was not allowed to judge cases. So the Zerah Shimshon says this idea that Hashem could uh, appoint a Bezdin, a heavenly court of Malachim, of angels, and then not be able to overrule them, but have to follow their rulings, actually happened on earth. And uh, when Devorah was alive, she could teach the judges, she could appoint judges, but she couldn't judge cases herself, and she would have to follow the rulings of these judges, even though she had in many cases, superior knowledge to than, than, than they possessed. And she taught them and trained them and appointed them. Ve'achshav, next paragraph, Ve'achshav, Yomru, and now we understand what the nations of the world would, were, would say. Toshas kocho kinekeva dafka. Hashem's strength was weak in a very specific sense, like a woman. Not in the physical sense uh, oh, a woman isn't physically as strong as a man. No, it means in this in this specific area about judging and ruling, Hashem apparently uh, had a weakened position, just like a woman does. Even though Hashem created the heavenly court, nonetheless, he was not able to do anything against their intentions and against their rulings. Umishum hachi, because of this point that Moshe made, because Moshe's point to Hashem was, Hashem, they're going to say that you can't go against the Bezdin Shalmala, the heavenly court of angels, even though you appointed them and created them. His kirloa kodesh borchu nisei hayom. 
That's why Hashem mentioned to Moshe, didn't the Egyptians hear about the miracles at the sea? Velo nise Mitzrayim. And Hashem did not mention the miracles of taking B'nai Yisrael out of Mitzrayim. She benise Mitzrayim, because when it comes to the miracles of of the exodus from Egypt, those miracles took place with the approval of the heavenly court. Kamosha Perish Rashi, as we see in Rashi's explanation on the Pasuk Vayehi Bachatsi Halaila, regarding the last of the ten plagues, the slaying of the firstborn, it says, and it was at the middle of in the middle of the night, the Hashem Hikahol Bechor. Hashem struck all of the firstborn of the Egyptians. Uh, Rashi says, what does it mean, Va Hashem and Hashem? Why doesn't it just say Hashem did it? He struck the firstborn. Why does it say and Hashem? Hu uves dino. It was Hashem and his court. So we see clearly that the heavenly court approved of Hashem's uh, doing the 10 plagues, culminating with the 10th plague that, that broke Paro's uh, willpower completely and the willpower of the Egyptians to continue holding on to the Jews and keeping them as slaves. It broke them. And they turned around and said, after the 10th plague, after Makas Bechoros, not only did they say that the Jews could leave, they told the Jews, you have to leave. Paro chased them out of Mitzrayim at that, at that point. Vechain Omru Medrash, and so it says in the Medrash, Omar HaKodesh Borchu Lamalochim. Hashem said to the angels, Ruuyim HaMitzrayim Lilkos Bechoshech. It is appropriate for the Egyptians to be struck with darkness. That was the ninth plague. Miyad Hiskimu Kulam, and all of them immediately agreed. Velo Moru Estevaro, and like the words in Tehillim say, they did not defy Hashem's words. Why? Why were all the malachim in such a ready agreement to say, Hashem, uh, do each plague that the, you know that you want to do against the Mitzrayim? Lefisha hadin ha'yenosein, because justice provided lahatzel es Yisrael to save and rescue the Jewish people. It was only just that they should be able to finally escape from the unjust slavery of the Egyptians. Aval benise hayam, but when it comes to the miracles of Yamsuf, hayamachlokes godol amala, there was a great argument up above in the heavenly court. Kanire mea medrash yalkut, as we see in the medrash yalkut shimoni, parsha speshalach on our parsha. She soron shel mitzrayim, because the angelic officer who represented the Egyptians, he argued in front of the heavenly court to save the Jews, yes, but not to de destroy the Egyptians. And apparently the Sar Shel Mitzrayim, the, the angelic uh, representative of the, of the nation of Egypt was so uh, so uh, eloquent in his arguments and so strong and powerful that he convinced others to say, wait a minute, yes, we agree, Hashem, take out the Jews, rescue them, justice provides for that. But to wipe out the Egyptians and drown all of the, the, the army and the men in the sea, that's not necessary? Is that really necessary? Is that really called for? So there was a great machlokas going on in the Bezdin Shelmala about whether or not the Egyptians should be destroyed at Yamsuf. Next page. Column on the right. Umi shum hachi, and because of this, heishi v'kodesh baruchu, <clears throat> Hashem responded to Moshe, v'halo ro'u hanisim sh'asisi lahem bayam. Hashem said to Moshe, didn't the Egyptians see what I did at the sea? Afal pisha habezdin shel malo lo hayu maskimim. Even though the heavenly court didn't agree with me uh, in, in, in their entirety, they didn't agree with me unanimously. They were arguing about it, and many of them were saying, I shouldn't wipe out the Egyptians, but I did it anyway. And that should prove to the Egyptians that I'm not confined to follow the rulings of the bezdin shel malo. So, so why should they think that? The Omar Lefonov, and so Hashem said to Moshe, Achshav Yomru, now they will say, meaning 
even though the Egyptians will be savvy enough to realize that you aren't confined and you aren't forced to follow the rulings of the Bezdin Shalmala, they'll still have an issue. Lifnei Melech Echad, and they'll say in front of one king, you could go against the Bezdin Shalmala, Lifnei Shloshim Ve'echad Melochim, but in front of 31 kings, you can't. What does that mean? Klomar, this means to say, Lifnei Melech Echad, Lo Rotsu HaBezdin, when you, Hashem, went up against one king, namely Paro, the heavenly court did not want to prevent Hashem from doing what he wanted to do, from defeating Paro and doing the 10 plagues and bringing out the Jews from slavery. The Bezin Shalmala said, you're going up against one king, you're going up against Paro. He only has one heavenly representative, one angelic representative. Fine, we're not going to stop you from doing that. The Shema Hiskimu Imolich Voldo, perhaps they also agreed in order to honor Hashem. The Ode, and more so, Shaloha Yeshom Elamakatra There was only one accuser accusing the Jews and saying, okay, they can go out. But, uh, but uh, I'm sorry, there was only one uh, person on the whole heavenly court, one angel, excuse me, on the whole heavenly court saying, no, don't let the Jews go out. So he could be overruled. He was a minority, he gave a minority uh, report, a minority opinion. But when Hashem proposed to go and bring Am Yisrael up to Canaan and go up against 31 kings, certainly he would not be able to go against the ruling of the heavenly court there would be many many accusers and they would be able to prevent uh, Hashem from being successful meaning there would be at least 31 uh, uh, angelic representatives representing the 31 nations of uh, kings in Eretz Canaan at that time, and perhaps they had allies and others that would join with them. So there would be a tremendous group, a powerful group, a lobby, a whole uh, Eretz Canaan lobby that would come out against Hashem and try to prevent him from bringing B'nai Yisrael up and conquering the nations of Eretz Canaan. Ad Omar lay in this debate between Moshe and Hashem went back and forth until finally Hashem said, Salachti kidvarecha, I have forgiven the people according to your words, Moshe. I will not destroy them. I have forgiven them. And here's how we're going to proceed uh, over the next... Uh, over the next many decades for the Jews traveling around in the Midbar, but ultimately they will come to Eretz Canaan and they will enter the land of Canaan. So according to the Zerah Shimshon, what he has shown us is really a first level of understanding uh, matters from the Psukim that we looked at in the beginning about a, a, a Moshe arguing with Hashem and and, and uh a pro and trying to prevent the destruction, successfully preventing the destructions of the Jewish people after the Chedam Miraglim, and then based on Midrashim and Gomorrah's taking it to an even deeper level of understanding what they were really talking about, Hashem and Moshe, what they were really referring to and saying in their discussion, so that now we have a very full and comprehensive understanding of to the points Hashem was making and the points Moshe was making. And Moshe was so successful in his defense and his role of defense attorney that he was able in the end to convince Hashem to say, Salachti kidvarecha, I've forgiven you according to your words. May Hashem forgive, always forgive the Jewish people of their sins and always forgive us for any of our mistakes and and uh, and uh, transgressions. And Yasha Koch for joining in the learning this week. We look forward to learning together in the Zerah Shimshon again next week.